a few pointers I wanted to, you know, double click on. One, um, so a carry trade is essentially uh, when one entity borrows at a low rate and lends it to another entity at a higher rate. That's, um, you know, carry trade in a sentence. No. Uh, but Okay, so this this is exactly what your local bank does, right? Um, they uh, lend you, uh, we go and deposit our money in the bank. They give us very, very, very uh, minor uh, minor amount of interest on what we deposit, but they use that to lend the money to the borrowers at a higher rate, and they make the difference. So this this key idea, like how how has this you know. Um, how has this concept kind of uh, spread across different parts of the financial markets and in other domains? And what has led to the rise in, uh, in this uh, phenomenon being spread across different, uh, different markets? Yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of good stuff in what you just said. Um, so let me try to unpack it. So first of all, you're absolutely right. What banks are doing is a carry trade. And one, I think miss people have I think interpreted our book some some people not all as hey carry trades are bad we're not saying that in fact we explicitly say that some level of carry trading is absolutely critical for the functioning of markets and is good for the economy so banks provide a really useful function right you've got money you don't need right now you put it in the in the bank they give you a little bit for that and in turn they lend it to someone who needs it um and so that is kind of a helps allocate capital efficiently um so that's there's nothing wrong with with that but um the so that that's point number one in terms of the way carry trades work i think it's important for all of us all anyone listening to understand that it's a trade, it's a transaction that makes money as long as the world more or less stays the same. So in the book, we say it's a trade that makes money if nothing happens, right? So the bank pays you, let's say, let's say they're generous, they pay you 1% and they loan it out at 5%. So if nothing happens, the world stays the same, they're earning that 4% difference, mm -hmm. right? If something happens, if, if something changes such that maybe the people they've lent the money to can't pay it back, then they have a potential to lose money. So carry trades are really a bet on stability. And in, in the banking world, stability is kind of what's happening with the economy. Now, when you do a carry trade in the financial markets, Let's go to the currency carry trade that we talked about earlier. You borrow Japanese yen, and let's say you pay zero, and you invest in a Brazil, uh, let's say Turkish bond, because we use Turkey a lot in the book. You buy a Turkish bond for 10%. That's a carry trade. You're kind of acting like the bank, right? You're borrowing um, at zero, and you're lending it out at 10. That's a bet on the Turkish currency staying stable. So um, if the Turkish currency stays stable, you do really well. But if there's a depreciation in the Turkish currency, then you might not have enough Turkish lira to pay back your loan in Japanese yen. So as the currency starts depreciating, you need to close out your carry trade and pay your money back. So in the financial, the difference between that and the banking world is Financial market prices are moving every day, all the time. And so you are having to react to that in a way that banks don't have to, don't have to revalue their books every day. So volatility in the world gets transmitted to carry trades much quicker than it would to say the, you know, the, the old fashioned banking carry trade. 